Mel Brown, what's this you're telling me about Hayden Bunton leaving South Australian football scene next year? Well, what happened in Perth uh, during the course of last week was that they state that uh, Swan Districts, who everybody knows that Hayden coached the Premiership since 60, 61 and 62, are about or have... 61, 62, 63. Well, 60, oh, you were a young boy in those I days. I can't remember that. Yeah, little fat but, kid of Scott College. <laughs> <laughs> now, big fat kid. <laughs> but uh, they say that they're very keen uh, to secure his services, and I don't know whether they have approached Bunce or not. Bunce, you tell us whether they have or they haven't. No, but I had a, a ring from uh, six weeks over there last, last week. Um, what happened? I spoke to Billy Walker after the Richmond Swan Districts game. In fact, I had a good night with Bill up at the Australia Hotel and a few of the Swans people. And... Uh, I, did, I told Bill that I'd be over there at the end of the season um, for a holiday. I'd be coming over to Perth. Uh, maybe just to you know, relax and go and see some friends over there. No, no, Another holiday. Went, last time you came for a holiday, you were going for a boat trip around the world and yeah, you ended up coaching here. I've got to be pretty careful when I go over there. Though. You know, to go back there and live permanently, I could be in a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> as you know, the same trouble you're in at the moment. Um, no, I, that's what it was and probably it's it developed. But Perth's a great place for rumours. Uh, you know, I can remember one rumour with you, Malcolm. What was that? Uh, the days when you went, that day, that time some years ago, you went away with the glass. Remember that? And, uh, you know, not, they didn't name the glass because you were going away with them, I don't think. But uh, you, you went for a swim somewhere in Greece. Well, it was permitted swimming. You weren't allowed to swim there. No, so, that, that wasn't true. They well, stripped me and threw me in. Yeah, then well, David Clark took off with my shirt. Well, off came the gear. And the rumour was that you were uh, then just thrown into the uh, caboose yeah. because you were swimming in a permitted area. Yeah. That's not the truth. The truth was you were thrown into the caboose for swimming without any, enough means of support. Is that right? <laughs> yes. You, <laughs> you, Bunch, you, didn't, you didn't really answer the question. Is there a chance you'll be back to Swan Districts next year? I'm very happy with South Adelaide, Max. Um, it's a good side. I like the club. I, in fact, the, the clubs I've coached, uh, you know, I can see a lot, lot more potential in South Adelaide than going anywhere else. So I'm settled here. Fine. Mal, what sort of trouble are you in in Perth at the moment? Me? I'm in no trouble. Bunt just said you were. Oh, this is no, this is no, nothing about, to do with that. He's talking is, about my love life, I think. That's right. Your mother doesn't agree. <laughs> <laughs> Little girl from no, I, I was referring to your legal battles. What's, what's happened there? Oh, regarding the, uh, the saga of the old lady, mm. um, it's uh, still under... Uh, we, we're most probably appealing to the Supreme Court. And you offered to resign as coach to the club. What happened there? Um, the club, well, I, I didn't say, so what I did was I offered to resign and stated that I would like to continue as coach of the club because I feel the club have a obligation to the people and the kids and the key people you're coaching. And I felt it was a commitment that had to be made. And uh, I'm, I said I wouldn't, you know, I want, would like to have kept going if, I, if they'd permit me to, which they did, and I'm very grateful. Mal, something that, that South Australian football is looking at very seriously is the two umpiring system. Um, Perth is about what at the end of its trial period of two umpires. That is correct. We've got uh, we the, 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 they at the end of the first seven games they introduced it for a period of seven games and then they continued it on for the remainder of the season. Um, it has had mixed success. Um, I think that the idea of it was to cut out the violence and behind the play hitting and all this. I don't believe that concept it has helped in any way whatsoever. In fact, there's been. Uh, three bad head injuries this year since the two umpires have come in. Glenn Dinning had his head in pla you know, neck in plaster from a blow and uh, Alan Orr last fortnight ago received a heavy knock behind the play. And So I don't think it's really done anything in that regard, but the big problem that's been experienced is that the two umpires, the gap in between them, uh, Neil, neither of them's blowing their whistle. So you're waiting, and both are waiting for the other guy to blow the whistle, and uh, consequently there's a lot of confusion. They're, they're too close together or something, aren't they? Yeah, they, they seem to be, the, the gap in between, uh, you, you know, the, the room in between, when, in other words, you've got this end of the ground, I've got the mm. other end, and when it gets into the middle, no one's blowing the whistle, they're both expecting, I'm expecting yeah. you to blow it, and you're expecting well, me to blow it. Well, do you find uh, that, you know, this is what I worry about here, that uh, you get one umpire that interprets one rule one way, another one interprets another, and you, you that, know, if you, the um, umpire's one end, you get it one way, and you, the other end, you get it a different way. Well, that's right. We had uh, an experience a couple of weeks ago, and you get the, in reverse to that, you get the situation where one umpire blows the whistle for holding the man, and the other one blows the whistle for holding the ball. And the same set of circumstances. The same set of circumstances. Johnny Cole. Mel, Mel, you've played in Victoria and in Western Australia. What's the difference in demands of a player in Victoria compared to Western Australia and the pressures? By pressures, I mean, do they get analysed a lot more by the press, uh, criticised a lot more by the media? And the demands retraining compared Western Australia to Victoria? Well, I think that um, it's been very apparent this year, until 
I think Neil, I'd back him up here, uh, East Perth, when I coached East Perth, we came over and played Glenelg and won by 60 points. And they went to uh, Perth, Glenelg, and we beat them, East Perth, that was, by 60 points. And the standard of South Australian football, and that year Glenelg played off in grand finals. So I wasn't a very high opinion, uh, you know, when I say that. But now it's been very apparent this year that the South Australian standard of football is a lot higher than that in Western Australia. And I, I think that what's happening in Western Australia is that the young players, and I think it's apparent here from talking to Bob and other people around, that the young guys now have so many other things that they can do that they don't, aren't prepared to put the time and the effort that is required. You know, like um, anyone here, if, if, if somebody had your place and you were a young player and you wanted to play, instead of training the two nights a week, you'd train five nights till you got his place. And then you'd want to, once you got there, you'd want to be in the state side and you'd set your goals, which were something to aim for. In Victoria though, Mal, do you have to train so many nights a week like the Monday or Wednesday, most train Richmond nights train, train Richmond the... train Sunday morning, which a player is responsible for the training. Yep. Tuesday, Wednesday, they just do running on Wednesdays. You might do ten hundreds or you know some two hundreds or something like of this nature. And Thursday, so they have the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I found that. Um, and I think, hard work. No, I found that with the, not having the break between you know going over there too late. If I'd been conditioned to it all the time, that I'd prefer it to be Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday because it gives you the it's day recovery. break. You know, whereby with the Tuesday, th Wednesday, Thursday it was hard. Well, there's one uh, thing at the moment over here that uh, they're worrying about attendances. Uh, we even compared it recently, or uh, well, some weeks ago, with WA attendances on a smaller population, and they're up over there. Um, NFL football here has captured the imagination of the people, and so it should. It's played here, and you see it on TV. But Western Australia have been beaten; they haven't won a game yet in the NFL competition. And I know that uh, Swans and the South Fremantle, when they came over here. We're most concerned that um, you know they, they bring your side over. They've got the reputation of WA to uphold, and yet they're worrying about injury. You know, they, now are they going to be as keen next year on the NFL competition, or are they going to just let it phase out and do what Melbourne did early and concentrate on their own club? Well, match? I hope that uh, the national football competition doesn't go because it's a tragedy. I think I think it's the only way our game can survive. It has to become a national, you know, with a keen national competition. Now, I think it's unfortunate that when you do anything, you have teething problems and. Uh, Neil, I think talking to you in Melt Perth, that we, you know, the fact that they had the top sides that were in last year aren't necessarily the mm. top sides of this year. And the concept that they've got now where they're going to have an overall, I believe, knockout, you know, competition for next year, aren't they, amongst the locals and get the top sides at the end of the first round to participate, I think this will be far you, better. You can't play at night over there. This is the trouble. See, all the games are played here at night. Uh, under lights in the water. Yeah, also the travelling too, though, see, yeah. is, is a lot but, extra. Uh, you know, you know yourself, the ground conditions in Perth, South Fremantle against Carlton couldn't handle at all the, uh, the uh, ground conditions and Swans had the same trouble against Richmond. Um, are there any, is there any chance of playing night games over there um, somewhere? You've got no lights over there, have we? Well, not at the moment. Uh, East Perth have just spent a lot of money and have put uh, about $3,000 worth of lights around their ground, but I'd like to see it even to the degree whereby it doesn't interfere with the local games. You know, like, you, what, you know, play it on the Sundays or the Wednesdays. Now, I haven't been in favour of Sunday football for club games and mainly from a bias point of view this year we had the two we had uh, two Sundays and two Mondays in 10 weeks which was it was excessive you know uh, demands but it, you, you can look at it there's no reason you know why uh, properly organized overall that they couldn't play on Wednesdays if they the competition was all worked so that all the teams that were going to play the following weeks weren't affected you know yeah. Gary, no, just, no, Gary just quickly, now I'll be interested you know you they make you out pretty rough and you don't look too bad in here but uh, why did you leave Victoria? You know, were a bit rough for you over there. You thought you'd get back to Western Australia, or what? Couldn't you handle it over there? What was, was the story a, no, there? No, well, it wasn't too rough. And uh, you know, if you go back and coach Claremont, you've dollars. You dollars. must be something wrong with you. But dollars. But it's not really, money. You're like Curly. No, eh? it's not money at all. No, I only went over there for one year. And uh, Neil's got it. I'd have loved to come here, but he gets all the money they reckon. I oh, know. <laughs> no, that's for sure. You're right on the ball there. Now well, you're patting the play in Western Australia, watching South Fremantle and Norwood last Tuesday night. Whilst Hawthorne and North Melbourne break it up with a short one in the back lines, I thought South Fremantle kicked a short one, went back for the kick, kicked another short one, yeah. went back for the kick. Does this happen often over there? Our, uh, it has, it, South Fremantle are a fully confident side, and I think I spoke to Bob about them before they played. And they Just don't as well, because Bunce was coaching South Fremantle in the <laughs> no, finish. No, <laughs> they don't... Cold. They, they don't... Uh, uh, East Perth are the most physical side that in WA and they're the side that would, would succeed most against the Victorians or any South Australian side. The other players are, are playing, you know, the prettiest style of football. Thanks, Mel.
You're something in the, of an expert as far as tribunals are concerned. I know there's a couple of things you want to get right off your chest right now. Gee, that set me up. <laughs> it's true, what though. Am I, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> I think that's awful, uh, but I like true, it. <laughs> it's awful, but I like it. I don't think that... Uh, I think the way some of the people... It's, it amazes me in football how there's 120 minutes of football and the people that continually replay those sort of incidents, they only last possibly 30 seconds of a game, and all the great marks and the great kicks that are taken aren't conveyed. So it's really because people basically like blood, and it's proven fact. You know, you, you go to Spain and you see them uh, stabbed to death, bulls, etc. And here we like the gladiator sport. And I, I believe the people enjoy a bit of brutality, and they, the same people that always sit down and be saying it, and isn't that terrible? They'll be the ones that really like it. That's why they go along every week to see something happen. Would you encourage your son to play that game? When things like that happen? Me? Yeah. Would you encourage your son to do that? I'd be telling him to hit him first. Plenty of experience. You've been reported in every state in Australia. So, from a player's point of view, how do you see it? Umpires have black lists. And oh, they, they have black lists. I played under Ray Montgomery in Perth for 13 games at centre-half forward and never got a free kick. He reported me and then said he gave me a free kick straight after it. And in the tribunal evidence he said, and Brown thinks that I'm vindictive towards him. Yeah. He said, I gave the boy a free kick within three minutes of reporting him. He said, no, I'm not vindictive. It had been 13 games prior that he hadn't given one free kick. So you're kick. saying umpires cheat? I believe, yes, some umpires do cheat. You're joking. I you am not joking. You can sit there and say that umpires cheat. You, listen, the umpires get together. We had a case of a boy in the Colts last week where the goal umpire heard a boy tell the umpire to go and jump in the lake. So the goal umpire told, right, told, the kid he was reported, and the central umpire lays out the report charge. On the Tuesday come, the case was dismissed in the journal Thursday because the central umpire had to confer with the goal umpire because the goal well, umpire heard what the kid said. Obviously they're all idiots in Western Australia because it doesn't happen in South well, we Australia. We learn everything from you, Ken. Of course it does. Of course it does. Not. Now, you've been, course it does. You've been an imposter all your life. <laughs> it's weird. Hey, come I caught week. you a couple of times. Now, I hope you come over every week because this is just what this mob need here because they sit there. The way they're trying to make the game out now, you may as well play basketball. Here Victorians are now bringing in that you're not allowed to punch from behind, you're not allowed to spoil. And, you know, physical contact's part of the game. In America, they're the most professional oh, people in the world. America. Get back here. And on tribunals, they have a bloke, the bloke in charge of the tribunal system is the manager of the league, and they just go in there and he deals out fines. Now, if you want the best entertainers to perform, yeah. you've got to get the best players on the ground every week. And there's no there. value seeing good players suspended for telling an umpire <laughs> to jump in the lake. They should introduce fines and suspensions, would, uh, and suspensions would, should be ten would years you, ago. Would you agree to give the umpire full control of a game? I'd I believe that's the only way to clear it up. I'd give the umpires no control because the way they are, um, I reckon most umpires, the only responsibility they've ever had is when they tick the items off their wife's shopping list and they're not men. And that's the trouble with the blokes today. Umpires are men. Ten years ago, an umpire, Jeff Crouch and these guys, they were part of the game and this, these incidents weren't happening because they were men and they could control men. Now the umpires run 50 yards to shift you six inches on the mark. Mel, are you Ma saying that the tribunal then should stay as it is at the moment? No, I reckon, it should, I reckon it should be the general manager makes the decisions of the league. What and general they, manager? Whoever's the bloke in charge charge of the South Australian Football oh, League, no. just save all this rubbish, you just get in there and the, everybody sits around a table, you discuss it and you say, right, are you told the umpire to jump on the lake, you find $200, well, play next week. But you don't, well, suspend, you don't have to have all this ballyhoo, just let, put the responsibility back onto one man, the general manager. The umpire's in control of the game, well, give him the responsibility. Yeah, he can, he if he reports a player, the player is suspended. Well, umpires yeah. have got too much power now. Oh, they pre use the game to promote yeah, themselves. How do you get on television? How do you get on television? You wouldn't even been here if it hadn't been your controversial umpire. Mel, Mel. You've been paid money under false pretenses. This stupid idea of dragging up the player that's been offended against. They tell lies. They have to. So do the two and umpires you, get together. They don't tell lies. Oh, well, why, do, why should two players tell lies? And don't two tell me you don't, don't tell lies. Don't tell me you haven't told lies. Never, never. And no yeah. umpire does. You okay, both get together. Where's the halo? Oh, oh, right, come on. One at a time. Mal, was this the reason that you locked the two umpires in the? I did not lock the two umpires in the room. Were you aware that they that was, I think that was very bad. <laughs> <laughs> that was our general manager. That's the first time I've been proud of him. <laughs> Can, can Why take up? all these legal men up there? I agree with well, They I tell agree. lies too. Same as the player well, tells lies. So do the umpires tell lies? Yeah, right, right. Oh, <laughs> come on, Kenny. Come on, Kenny. Boys, boys, boys. I bet boys. you tell your wife lies when you've been out late at night. <laughs> That's a different reason.